Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video to show you on this sheath that I just built uh, for my buddy Michael who has his own uh, YouTube channel. I want you guys to go check out Mr. Rex you. I'll leave the um, uh, link to his channel in the description box down below. And uh, let's get into this sheath. If you guys have been following me for, uh, I think over the past year, roughly, I've been doing uh, some sheaths for him and he loves leather over kydex so that's what he's gotten on all of his sheets and slightly different setups and configurations each time but it's always for these kind of classic um american made knives uh we've done i think an rmj sax um this is a uh this is a buck general buck 120 i think it's called um we've done a, a gerber I can't remember the, it was like a Gerber Frontier Bowie or something like that. Um, we've done kind of these just all very combat style, American made classic knives. And these are a lot of fun to work on. They're just beautiful pieces. And with the leather over Kydex, you know me, this is my favorite thing. It just gives you the best of all worlds. So I'm really happy with how this came out. But given his YouTube channel, he asked me, uh, and he also knew that I'd started working with a laser engraver. So we talked and came up with putting his logo on uh, the front of this sheet. So you can see that's his channel name, Mr. Rexu. And Have a Knife Day is his sign off. So this is a really cool logo. It's like a skull with a beret on it. It didn't come out, you know, absolutely perfect because when you shrink it down small enough to fit on the sheath, um, it's probably a user error as far as how I program the laser to do things. I'm still pretty green with that thing, but, um, not too much detail was lost on it. So I think it looks really cool. And obviously that have a knife day logo on the back. So let's get into what this sheath includes. It's pretty simple setup. Um, as you can see, and as I said earlier, it's leather over Kydex. He opted for the edge stitching. So you see some nice stitch work around the edge. That is actually <clears throat> stitched through the kydex as well as the leather. And that is done by putting a metric ton of little tiny drill holes through it. So it's, it's a really tricky process because doing so oftentimes can split the edge of the kydex apart. And that's something I generally try to avoid just for aesthetic reasons. If nothing else, it also makes it a little bit weaker if your edges split. Um, but yeah, it's a tricky process and uh, you just have to go really slow and be very patient with it. And then obviously thread the, uh, put the thread through the holes. So it, this is done in what's called a saddle stitch. I do my very best to hide the stitch at the end of it by pulling the knot into one of the holes. So you tie off a knot and then just kind of pull the thread through until the knot kind of gets stuck inside a hole. And then you seal it with some kind of adhesive. So I use the same barge all-purpose cement that I use to adhere the kydex to the leather or vice versa rather um, as kind of like a little sealant so none of that is really visible uh, you can see just a little bit of the tail of the thread sticking out there but overall really nice edges good stitching and uh, really happy with how the the lasering came out too um, the carry setup on this that he asked for was a fixed loop rather than a dangler so when we say fixed loop um, some people might even call this a drop loop or a fixed loop, whatever. Um, basically, it's just a loop, a leather loop that you can put your belt through. And the whole point of it is that it is fixed directly to the sheath or to something sturdy that's on the sheath. In this case, I actually opted to go with a mounting plate and then attach the loop to that. And the reason I did it this way is so that this can be totally ambidextrous. If he ever decides to sell this, um, and it happens to be a left-handed buyer, they can easily flop this plate over to the opposite side and carry it perfectly comfortably. Or if he ever decides to carry left-handed, he can do that as well. Um, so you see a nice thick buffalo hide drop loop here, fixed loop, American flag. We've got his logo on that as well. I think that came out really nice. And then uh, the black bear, of course, on the other side. The draw on this is really nice. If you just give it a little push, it's got a bit of a springy draw. I wouldn't quite call it ballistic, but I think that's actually due to the shape of the clip point at the tip. Normally, a clip point doesn't have quite so much uh, lift on the end, but this one actually, if you look at it, uh, actually starts to rise back up. So I think that might be what's causing it to 
it'll get part way out and then change angle and lose a little bit of that momentum but obviously if you're drawing straight up that's not going to be a problem at all so it's a really nice fit on this no rattle no play certainly not going to come out on you oh yeah and then there's an exotac fire rod here on top so a little shock cord on that and <clears throat> it is a little bit snug in the holder right now but this is going to get loose over time as you use the rod and whittle it down right now it's just it requires a little bit of a a sturdy draw sorry uh, what's the word i'm looking for you got to pull with a little bit of force to get that out of there but it is still smooth it's just very secure and then uh, the shock cord i put on there um basically as a retention device after you've whittled this down and it's too small to snugly fit into this uh holder there so that's what i've got for you guys on this let me know what you think um I really like this setup. I think this is just kind of a classic, clean, and uh, nice look. And I think it fits this particular knife really well. Um, but I'd love your opinions down below. What do you think of the, the Buck 120, the Buck General? What do you think of leather over Kydex? My laser engraving work, you know, I think, I think we can all agree it needs a little bit of work. I know you guys might not know exactly what the logo is supposed to look like, but there are supposed to be a little bit more uh, for, for detail work that you can see throughout here. Um, but overall it did come out pretty good. So let me know what you guys think of all this stuff. And then the one other thing I thought I'd throw in there for him, uh, you guys have been watching the last several videos I've put out. I've done this a few times now. Um, but I'm trying to push a little bit on my new wallet design uh, give you a comparison. This is the old wallet. It's got a molded cash uh, card compartment on the front, molded cash compartment in the back, and then a layer to kind of separate it. Elastic bungee holding it all together, which makes it expandable. So you have uh, varied degrees of storage capacity, which is really cool. But basically, this <clears throat> this is really hard to do by hand and get everything you know aligned and having correct spacing for all the holes and all that and depending on how it comes out in the press you know you might have a really clean looking card compartment or it might be kind of you know dull and undefined so what i decided to do was start uh create using the laser and cnc to start cutting parts that i could use um to make basically a die press for these so that they come out perfectly even every single time with exact placement on the drill holes so this is what you're seeing. Obviously identical uh, dimensions one to the next. The whole placement is perfect and you always get the same definition. So <clears throat> just as kind of like a little plug here for the wallets, which I will be putting up on my website sometime very soon. Um, it's uh, basically it's a molded compartment on the front for cash or for cards. And then on the back, it is a cash compartment. Pretty much the same as the old design. The only difference is how much more uh, accurate it is every time and that now with this I can actually make uh, different size wallets so if you guys want you know if you know you're only going to carry six cards versus like a dozen which is what I carry um, I can make this recess shallower by just using a, a thinner molding prop so um, it's kind of a cool thing but not meant to be a tactical or minimal wallet or anything like that. It's just a full size wallet alternative to leather or whatever else you guys carry. But there you go. There you have it. So I really like this, but I thought I'd give you guys a good close up of a couple of these. This one's going out to a, a fellow Kydex maker named Corey. And uh, this one, of course, going to Michael to match his sheath. Thought this was cool. And I had that on there. Now, I would have put his skull logo on the front of this thing, but the um, the laser engraver that I have access to, I basically I have a membership at a, a maker space, so I get to access whatever they have for tools, and they've got a laser engraver there. Um, but <laughs> we had an accident with it pretty recently, and somebody, um, whatever they were working on, it caused the whole thing to catch fire. <laughs> Luckily, nobody was hurt, and they were able to put the fire out pretty quickly, but it is currently under repair, so... I was unable to get anything else, anything new 
laser engraved. Um, but this was from a test run that I'd done of his stuff, of Michael's stuff. Um, and it was just the right size to throw on the back of a wallet. So still should be pretty cool. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this stuff. Let me know what you think of my wallet design. Um, and, uh, of course, please go check out Mr. Rex. You, he does a lot of, uh, knife reviews, just classic, classic knives. He's really into, uh, you know, Bowie's and things like that. So if you go over and check out his channel, he's got a lot of good content over there. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thanks so much for tuning in. Of course, like, share, comment, subscribe, and stick around for the next one. God bless.